last night I got up to go to the chalkboard at 5 o'clock. I haven't been up to the chalkboard in a long time, you know, doing the magnet thing. And I don't even think you need a magnet on this one. I mean, we, we were just talking about it. You know, will this translate to, to radio? Yeah, uh, because you don't really even need the magnets. I want to tell you what's going on. You know, this boycott of uh, is there was a speech given and then a panel where John Kerry over in Israel said, and I want to quote, uh, and you see for Israel, there's an increasing delegitimization campaign that's been building up. People are very sensitive to it. There are talk of boycotts and other kinds of things. So what is the boycott? The boycott is to delegitimize Israel. Understand that. That's what the boycott is for, to delegitimize the state of Israel. And when John Kerry is talking about this, He just casually says, you know, people are very sensitive to it. There's talk of boycotts. In another speech, John Kerry uh, over the weekend said, you know, I I just want you to know, I mean, you know, there's this talk of boycotts. And that's not helpful, Israel. It's not helpful because it will rob you of your wealth. And uh, and that doesn't help that doesn't help anybody. And if that fails, then there will probably be violence. Wow. Okay. So you're you're saying that these boycotts have a point. You're helping leg- legitimize the delegitimization of Israel. That's your friend, John Kerry. So it bothered me so much that I went to the uh, news department and I said, "Could you guys help me out on this?" Because I believe that John Kerry and the administration are part of this campaign. They're staying at arm's length, but they are using that as a wedge. You're causing the boycott to happen, and you win either way. It's what this administration does. They win either way. If the boycott or the threat of this boycott actually comes and brings Israel to the table or to their knees, then the administration wins. If it doesn't, they've delegitimized Israel, and they win. That just screams Obama. So I said, could you look into this and let's let's try to put this together. Now, he's trying to distance himself. But let me start with Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson was an ambassador of Oxfam. When she took on SodaStream, it was Oxfam that was starting to go after her. And all of the lovers, how can you possibly be with Oxfam and stand with Israel, Right. So she resigns from Oxfam so she can do the SodaStream commercials because she says, I believe in it. I believe this is good. Now, who's Oxfam? Oxfam is opposed to all trade with Israel. Listen to that again. Oxfam supports a stoppage of all trade with Israel. Now, John Kerry is saying... Well, you know, there's talk of a boycott. Well, who's talking about doing a boycott? Oxfam. Oxfam is the center of the boycott. Now, is there any connection with Oxfam? Well, how about this? Do you remember the responsibility to protect from Samantha Power? Do you remember what that was? Samantha Power is Cass Sunstein's wife. And when George Soros first heard about this responsibility to protect, he loved it. So he co-founded this institution for the responsibility to protect. What is the responsibility to protect? Responsibility to protect was used during the war for Libya. That if there's a really bad situation going on, we have a responsibility to to protect those that are that injustice is happening to the reason why this is being so selectively used because nobody has a responsibility apparently to protect the christians that were being slaughtered by the muslim brotherhood the reason why this is being selectively used is because it's it it's intent from the very beginning according to samantha power herself the reason why this she came up with this theory is to protect the palestinians against a jewish genocide one that is being perpetrated on the Palestinians by the Jewish nation. And so she was saying, we have a responsibility to protect the Palestinians from the hatred of the Jews in Israel because they're the big oppressor. Okay, all right. So that was co-founded by George Soros 
and his, uh, what was it, international, his IAH or whatever it is. Who was the other co-founder? Oxfam. So George Soros and Oxfam get together, and they're the ones who funded the original responsibility to protect. Now... After John Kerry warned Israel that they would be boycotted internationally by Oxfam and others. Let me say it again. John Kerry warns that they're going to be boycotted internationally by Oxfam. John Kerry's wife, Teresa, gives millions to Oxfam. I don't need a chalkboard because it's really not that complex. You say after? Um. Yeah, I I did, and I, I as I said that I went back and corrected it because I I'm not okay. sure I I'm not sure I think it happened before. Regardless, right around the similar times here, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oxfam no. Oxfam one of their deals is no trade to Israel to Israel, Israel. Right, either no way. trade, so it doesn't matter. And the Secretary of State's wife. Gave a big fat check, millions, millions, of millions dollars of dollars to Oxfam, who, okay, who's leading the boycott. Geez. That his, her husband. It's not that complicated, right? Who her husband <laughs> is saying, you know, there are talks boy about boycotts. Yes, yeah, from your wife, from your wife, who has helped funding it. Okay, wow, it goes on. Um, wow. Tides also gives a lot of money to Oxfam. Bet they do. John Kerry gives money to Tides. Mm. Beyond that, the president has appointed Smita Singe to his Global Development Council, who happens to be on the governing board of Oxfam. So now you have a governor of the board of directors in this administration. Then you also have Valerie Jarrett praising the administration's work with Oxfam, saying, quote, President Obama will continue to partner with leaders from the public and private sectors and with or extraordinary organizations such as Oxfam. We, as we continue to save lives and improve communities, I look forward to working together with Oxfam. Can you imagine the perspective of Israel seeing this? Oh, my gosh. I mean, you, wait, you hold on. Your secretary of state and the president's closest advisor are mm -hmm. giving money and endorsing an organization that's currently boycotting us? Yeah. Well, can you imagine? And they're supposed to be an can ally? Can you imagine if, uh, try, try this on for size. Well, I mean, look, look, how do we feel, how do we feel about Saudi Arabia? 